Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Welcome to the Abundant Life International Stream Online Bible Study. And uh, we would like to welcome each one of you who is on Zoom as well as on YouTube. And we want to thank God for each one of you as we continue studying God's Word uh, systematically, objectively in every book that you would be built up in the faith. I would like to blow the shofar declaring Jesus is Lord over your life and your family and all the ministry that you do and the whole stream of abundant life. <laughs> Hallelujah. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence with us. For in your presence there is fullness of joy. We pray that you would continue to quicken our hearts, our spirits. Lord, by your Holy Spirit, that your word would come alive. Your rhema word would feed our spirits to build up faith. That we would walk in the newness of life and bring glory, honor and praise to your name. We pray your blessings would go into all our physical as well as spiritual generations that we bring forth and birth in the spirit. In the name of Adonai, Yahushua, HaMashiach. And God's people shout, Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. For a quick recap of what we did last week. Well, we looked at the book of 2 Kings and from chapters 18 to 25. So we looked at the spiritual evaluation of King Hezekiah and how he had obeyed the Lord and he prospered and he received an extension of life as he looked to the Lord. God answered his heart's cry of repentance. Therefore, he had the 15 years of extension of life. Praise be to God. And then we had the spiritual evaluation of Manasseh, the political situation under Manasseh and his death. Then came the spiritual evaluation of King Josiah, who was a good king. He came into power at an early age of eight. Amazing. And God used them to clean up the temple, to repair the temple, and to set the temple in order. It's just like setting our lives in order as we uh, get into repentance and realign ourselves with God's Word and His Holy Spirit. And the book of the law was discovered. It was read out and the covenant with God was renewed. Hallelujah. The reforms followed and all the idols were destroyed. The people of God once again enjoyed peace under the reign of Josiah. And then came other kings that were wicked. And we see King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon besieging Jerusalem from King Jehoiakim of Judah because he did evil in the sight of the Lord. And we see Nebuzaradan, the captain of the God of Babylon, burned the temple of God and took away the golden vessels. And the king of Babylon struck the captive king's associates. So there was a lot of cruelty and hardship for the people of God. Today we are doing First Chronicles. And we are looking at uh, chapters 1 to 17, a magnifying glass revealing that we take a closer look at the book in Bible study. Well, chapter 1 to chapter 9 talks about the royal line of David as an overview. And then we see from chapter 10 onwards right up to the end in chapter 29 verse 30, there is the reign of of David. So the royal line of David is the first part, first nine chapters, and then we have the reign of David. In the first part, there are the genealogies of David and Israel. We see the ancestry, and it's a period of time of thousands of years. Well, when we look at the reign of David, 
we see in two chapters, rather three chapters, 10 to 12, the ascension of David as king, then the acquisition of the ark in chapters 13 to 17, and then 18 to 20, we see the victories of David. Chapter 21 to 27, we see the preparation for the temple. And chapter 28 to 29 end, we see the last days of David. And this whole second part of the reign of David is talking about history whilst the previous part talks about the genealogy. It's important to know genealogy as well as history. Ultimately it is his story. We see ancestry in the first part and then we see activity. The whole location is in Israel. Well, the first part is talking about thousands of years right from the beginning, that is Adam. But uh, we see the second part uh, from chapter 10 onwards to the end of the first Chronicles book. It's 33 years. Well, when we look at genealogy, it begins from Adam. Chapter 1 says, Adam set Enosh Kainan, Mahalel, Lalel, Jared, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And then it goes on to talk about the sons of Japheth. The sons of Japheth were Gomer, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubal, Meshach, and Teras. All these kind of names will be familiar when you read the book of Ezekiel as well as the book of Revelation because these names appear in the end time war and uh, these are roots of those generations. The sons of Japheth mainly went into Europe, the sons of Ham in verses 8 onwards uh, the sons of Ham were Cush, Mizraim, Put, and Canaan. Later on in verse 10, Cush begot Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one on the earth. Ham and the descendants went into Africa. Then we see verse 17 onwards of chapter 1. It is the sons of Shem. The sons of Shem were Elam. Ashur, Adphaz, Zad, Lud, Aram, Uz, Hul, Gether, and Meshach. And verse 19, to Eber was born two sons. The name of one was Peleg, for in his days the earth was divided. That was an earthquake, the continental drift. And his brother's name was Joktim. Then we come from verses 28 onwards, the genealogy from Abraham to Isaac. And it's good to just look at these names when we look at genealogy. It's important not to skip them and not to be unfamiliar. Even if you feel you cannot grasp it, it's important to just go through it. Verse 34 says, And Abraham begot Isaac. The sons of Isaac were Esau and Israel. And then we see from verse 35 onwards, it's the sons of Esau. And the sons of Esau were Eliphaz, Reol, Jeush, Shalem, and Korah. Then we have the kings of Edom and the chiefs of Edom. Chapter 2 talks about the genealogy of the sons of Jacob. These were the sons of Israel, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, Dan, Joseph, Benjamin, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. All these names are in this year's calendar where we discussed about the 12 tribes of Israel. And this month it is Zebulun dwelling. Believe God for your own dwelling place soon. And let's believe God for the house of God to come forth soon in the name of Yahushua and shiploads of blessing into your life in relationship, friendship, fellowship, 
stewardship, hallelujah, and partnership in the gospel of Jesus. In chapter 2, verses 3 onwards, we see the genealogy of the sons of Judah. And then the sons of David in chapter 3, we go on with the genealogy of the sons of Solomon. And then Simeon and Reuben, all the tribes of Gad and Manasseh, and moving into chapter 6, we see the high priestly line, the Levitical line in chapter 6 in verses 16 onwards, the musicians guild, the generations of Aaron, the cities of the priest and Levites. All these chapters that follow are talking about genealogy. It is Issachar in chapter 7, and then Benjamin, and then Naphtali, Manasseh, and Ephraim, Asher. And then you come into chapter 8, and it is Benjamin. And chapter 9, it's the genealogy of the 12 tribes who return. It's the genealogy of the priests who return, and then the genealogy of the Levites who return. Now, all the first nine chapters talk about genealogy, and we cannot go into all those details, but it is talking about lineage or lineage. Now we look at chapter 10, and here it is talking about the house of Saul, which dies in battle. The Philistines fought against Israel, and the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines and fell slain on Mount Gilboa. Then the Philistines followed hard after Saul and his sons, and the Philistines killed Jonathan, Abinadab, and Malcheshua, Saul's sons. The battle became fierce against Saul. The archers hit him, and he was wounded by the archers. Then Saul said to his armor-bearer, Draw your sword and thrust me through with it, lest these uncircumcised men come and abuse me. But his armor-bearer would not, for he was greatly afraid. Therefore Saul took a sword and fell on it. And when his armor-bearer saw that Saul was dead, he also fell on his sword and died. So Saul and his three sons died, and all his house died together. His royal line never continued. And when all the men of Israel who were in the valley saw that they had fled and that Saul and his sons were dead, they forsook their cities and fled. Then the Philistines came and dwelt in them. The Philistines defiled Saul, the cause of Saul's death in verse 13. So Saul died for his unfaithfulness, which he had committed against the Lord, because he did not keep the word of the Lord, and also because he consulted a medium for guidance, but he did not inquire of the Lord. Therefore, he killed him and turned the kingdom over to David, the son of Jesse. Now, in chapter 11, we see the anointing of David as king. Now, the house of Saul is taken away and instead... God is bringing in King David. So here's the anointing, verses 1 to 3. Then all Israel came together to David at Hebron, saying, Indeed, we are your bone and your flesh. Soon in time past, even when Saul was king, you were the one who led Israel out and brought them in. And the Lord your God said to you, you shall shepherd my people Israel and be ruler over my people Israel. Therefore all the elders of Israel came to the king of Hebron, and David made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord. 
and the anointed David king over Israel, according to the word of the Lord by Samuel. Then there was a conquest of Jerusalem. Hallelujah. David gets it. What Joshua couldn't do, David did. Hallelujah. What even Saul couldn't do. And David and all Israel went to Jerusalem, which is Jebus, where the Jebusites were, the inhabitants of the land. This was the final stronghold in Canaan. But the inhabitants of Jebus said to David, you shall not come in here. Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion, that is, the city of David. Hallelujah. Now David said, whoever attacks the Jebusites first shall be chief and captain. This was the most important place. This is the area of Calvary where is the main altar for planet Earth, the cross of Calvary. It was also the place where Abraham was going to slay his son Isaac as a foreshadow of the substance to come. That is, Yahushua is the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Even it thunders when we talk about Calvary. Hallelujah. Joab, the son of Zeruiah, went up first and became chief. Hallelujah. He's the one who went conquering. Then David dwelt in the stronghold. Therefore, they called it the city of David. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he built the city around it from the Milo to the surrounding area. Joab repaired the rest of the city. So David went on and became great. And the Lord of hosts was with him. Then from verse 10, we talk about the chiefs. Now, these were the heads of the mighty men whom David had, who strengthened themselves with him in his kingdom, with all Israel to make him king, according to the word of the Lord concerning Israel. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. And then from verses 15 onwards, we see all these mighty men of uh, Israel under King David. And there were 30 chief men. Now, three of the 30 chief men went down to the rock to David into the cave of Adullam. And the army of the Philistines encamped in the valley of Rephaim. David was then in the stronghold and the garrison of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem. And David said with longing, Oh, that someone would give me a drink of water from the well of Bethlehem which is by the gate. So the three broke through the camp of the Philistines, drew water from the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and took it and brought it to David. What daring, what boldness, what guts. These were the mighty men of David. Nevertheless, David would not drink it, but poured it out to the Lord because he thought of the risk they took. This was real faith and boldness. Hallelujah. Now, there are mighty warriors mentioned from 26 onwards. All these mighty men who did great exploits. In chapter 12, verses 1 onwards, it talks again about the mighty men at Ziklag. Now, these were the men who came to David at Ziklag, which he was still fugitive from Saul, the son of Kish. And they were among the mighty men helpers in the war. Hallelujah. They were mighty men, but yet they were helpers. The Holy Spirit is God, the third person of the triune Godhead, but yet he's called a helper. Amen. Would you like to be called a helper? A helper of God, a helper of people of God is a great privilege. Amen. We are all helpers in the house of the Lord. They were armed with bows using both the right hand and the left 
in hurling stones and shooting arrows with the bow. So they use the slings and they use the bows. Stones and arrows were going forth against the enemy. They were of Benjamin, Saul's brethren. Verse 18, Then the Spirit came upon Amasai, chief of the captains, and he said, We are yours, O David. Look at the loyalty, faithfulness. We are on your side, O son of Jesse. Peace, peace to you, Shalom, and peace to your helpers, for your God helps you. Your God helps you. And we are helpers. So David received them and made them captains of the troop. Then verse 23 onwards is the mighty men at Hebron. All these are great mighty men of war. Now when we look at chapter 13, before that, look at verse 32. It's an interesting verse. Of the sons of Issachar who had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. It is important to discern the times, the seasons, and what God wants to do in his Kairos time, divine time. Hallelujah. Let's turn, move on to chapter 13. And in chapter 13, we see the preparation to move the ark of God. Then David consulted with the captains of thousands and hundreds and with every leader. Hallelujah. David consulted. And David said to all the assembly of Israel, if it seems good to you and if it is of the Lord our God, let us send out to our brethren everywhere who are left in all the land of Israel and with them to the priests and Levites who are in their cities and their common lands that they may gather together to us and let us bring the ark of our God back to us. The ark of the Lord speaks of the presence of God. When we assemble together, we bring down the presence of God. Hallelujah. Only to be refreshed and renewed and restored. Hallelujah. So that we can continue moving on in God. For we have not inquired at it since the days of Saul. So there is a renewal of the covenant of God that and David does the right thing at the right time. It is important to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things will fall in place. Verse 4, then all the assembly said that they would do so for the thing was right in the eyes of all the people. Verse 5, so David gathered all Israel together from Shehor in Egypt to as far as the entrance of Hamath, to bring the ark of God from Kirjat the Aram. We see that on the way, what happens? Verse 6, Uzzah dies for touching the ark. And David and all Israel went up to Belau, to Kirjat the Aram, which belonged to Judah, to bring up from the ark of God the Lord who dwells between the cherubim where his name is proclaimed. Hallelujah. Two cherubim on the mercy seat are symbolic of the Father and the Holy Spirit. And in between is the mercy seat where the blood of the sacrifice is applied. And here is the place of Yehoshua, the Son of God. And it is his name that is the name which is above every other name and proclaim. Verse 7, So they carried the ark of God on a new cart from the house of Abinadab, and Uzzah and Ahio drove the cart. Verse 8, Then David and all Israel played music before God with all their might. It's good to have music as we worship God, with singing on harps, on stringed instruments, on tambourines, on cymbals and with trumpets. In the New Covenant, 
we need to make melody really in our hearts hallelujah unto the lord all musical instruments will only enhance worship but it is important for music to come out of our spirits with the right spirit that is contrite before god and when they came to chidon's threshing floor uza put out his hand to hold the ark for the oxen stumbled. It seemed like a very good act, but it was unfortunate that it angered God. Verse 10, then the anger of the Lord was aroused against Uzzah, and he struck him because he put his hand to the ark, and he died there before God. Verse 11, and David became angry because of the Lord's outbreak against Uzzah. Therefore, that place is called Perez Uzzah to this day. David was afraid of God that day, saying, how can I bring the ark of God to me? So David would not move the ark with him into the city of David, but took it aside into the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite. The ark of God remained with the family of Obed-Edom in his house three months, and the Lord blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that he had. I'll repeat this, and the Lord blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that he had because he housed the presence of God, the Ark of the Covenant. Hallelujah. I would challenge each one of you to open your hearts, to open your home to hospitality, but more than anything, be a good host, an excellent host, to the Holy Spirit and the presence of God will come down in a mighty way and bless your house and all that you have in it. Your whole family, your marriage, your family, your home, all the things in your house and all that you possess will be blessed. You will have an open heaven when you invite the presence of God. Hallelujah. As long as the Ark of the Covenant was in the house of Obed-Edom for those three months. He was a Gittite, and yet he was blessed tremendously. We look at um, chapter 14, and we see David's house is constructed. Verse 1, How Hiram, king of Tyre, sent messengers to David, and cedar trees, tall stately trees, with masons and carpenters, to build him a house. So David knew that the Lord had established him as king over Israel, for his kingdom was highly exalted for the sake of his people Israel. Another king, a foreign king, king of Tyre, amen, came forward to build the house of David. And this is what we say about the wealth of the wicked or the wealth of the Gentiles will come to the righteous. Hallelujah. You know, the king of Tyre is always talking about Satan, about Lucifer. When we look at the book of Ezekiel or Isaiah, we see David's children in uh, Jerusalem. They are all lined up there. And there is Nathan and Solomon as well which are the two to bring forth even Joseph, who was the foster father of Jesus. Amen. Through legality, we see Mary, the mother of Jesus. So through Solomon came Joseph in the lineage and uh, through Nathan, that is from David, came Mary, the mother of Jesus. Hallelujah. And that's what we see in Haggai as the signet ring, amen, in genealogy. Well, uh, verses 8 onwards, it talks about David's victory 
over the Philistines. And chapter 15 verse 1 onwards, it talks about the spiritual preparation to move the ark of God. Now, let us look at verse 13. For oh, because you did not do it the first time, the Lord our God broke out against us because we did not consult him about the proper order, how it was to be carried. God had a specification. Verse 14. So the priest of the Levites sanctified themselves to bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel. We need to sanctify our lives from time to time, like the Levitical order to become holy unto the Lord, because he is holy. And the children of the Levites bore the ark of God, how? On their shoulders by its poles not in a cart, even though the cart may be new, as Moses had commanded according to the word of the Lord. So you know why Uzzah was struck dead. He touched the ark of the Lord with his hand. Then David spoke to the leaders of the Levites to appoint their brethren to be the singers accompanied by instruments of music, stringed instruments, harps and cymbals, by raising the voice with resounding joy. When you sing and you play musical instruments, you must not uh, be putting on a religious garb, but you must be joyful. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Hallelujah. And we will be strengthened as we do it unto the Lord. Amen. Coming now down to 25, verse 25 of chapter 15 to the end, that's verse 29. We see the joyful transportation of the ark of God. Before that, I would like to look at verse 15 of chapter 14. And what does it say? The victory over the Philistines. This is a very important verse. It says, And it shall be when you hear a sound of marching in the tops of the mulberry trees, then you shall go out to battle, for God has gone out before you to strike the camp of the Philistines. So David did as God commanded him, and they drove back the army of the Philistines from Gibeon as far as Giza. Hallelujah. Then the fame of David went out into all lands, and the Lord brought the fear of him upon all nations. Hallelujah. So through that battle, God fought their battle. His presence was with them. Now verse 25 of chapter 15. So David, the elders of Israel, and the captains over thousands went to bring up the ark of the covenant of the Lord from the house of Obed-Edom with joy. Hallelujah. And so it was when God helped, God helped the Levites who bore the ark of the covenant of the Lord that they offered seven bulls and seven rams. David was clothed with a robe of fine linen as were all the Levites who bore the ark, the singers and Jenaniah, the music master, with the singers. David also wore a linen ephod. Thus all Israel brought up the ark of the covenant of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the horn, with trumpets and with cymbals, making music with stringed instruments and harps. It was a joyful noise unto the Lord but joyfully singing and joyfully playing musical instruments 
there was a celebration in the camp, in the procession. And it happened, verse 29, as the ark of the covenant of the Lord came to the city of David, that is, in Jerusalem, that Michal, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw King David whirling and playing music, and she despised him in the heart. David thanked joyfully and praised and worshipped God with playing on musical instruments, and he danced unto the Lord, swirling away. He did not worry about his seemingly, if uh, clothes fall off, and it seemed like nakedness, but he had a purity of heart. He was dancing unto the Lord, not uh, looking around to see if men were looking at him. Men look at the outward, but God looks at the heart. And here was his wife, Saul's daughter, Michal, who was peeping through the window, and she heard this whole procession coming, bringing in the ark of God. And she looked at her husband, King David, and she despised him. Because she did that, she was struck with barrenness. It is so important to have a purity of heart, beloved, because blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. The garden of our heart will always be fruitful. The womb of our spirit will always be fruitful. And we will bring forth as we have the right spirit before God. Never have any animosity toward anybody. Let us not judge anybody as people worship the King of Kings and Lord of Lords out of their purity of heart in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Chapter 16. We see the offering of sacrifices unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's read it, verse 1 onwards. So they brought the ark of God and set it in the midst of the tabernacle that David had erected for it in that simple tent. It was not the tabernacle of Moses. This is called the tabernacle of David, which will be restored in Free worship in the liberty of the Holy Spirit, worshiping the Father in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. 24 7, this worship continued and uh, taking turns like shifts in praising God, worshiping God, musicians taking turns in playing unto the Lord. Then they offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before God. Amen. Burnt offerings is the very sacrifice before the Lord to be reconciled to God and peace offerings is to maintain that relationship. Amen. And friendship with God and when and fellowship with God and when David had finished offering the burnt offerings and the peace offering, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord. Amen. And he distributed to every one of Israel, both man and woman, to every one a loaf of bread, a piece of meat, and a cake of raisins. Hallelujah. When you bless God, you get blessed. And when you get blessed, you must be a blessing to others. And then there was the appointing of musicians in verses 4 to 7. And there was this wonderful praise Psalm of David. Hallelujah. Let's read it. Amen. It's good to read the word of God as it is. On that day, David first delivered his psalm into the hand of Asaph and his brethren to thank the Lord. Always thank the Lord. The Ark of the Covenant has come. The tabernacle of David is erected and there is praise and worship unto the living God, Jehovah restored in Israel. Verse 8. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. 
Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing psalms to him. Talk of all his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. Wherever it is the Lord, it means Jehovah, the name, because the Jews would, the Israelites would not use the name of God. Okay, seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his name evermore. Remember his marvelous works, which he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O seed of Israel, his servant, you children of Jacob, his chosen ones, he is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. Remember his covenant forever, the word which he commanded for a thousand generations, the covenant which he made with Abraham and his oath to Isaac and confirmed it to Jacob for a statute to Israel for an everlasting covenant, saying to you, I will give the land of Canaan as the allotment of your inheritance. When you were few in number, indeed very few, and strangers in it, then they went from one nation to another and from one kingdom to another people. He permitted no man to do them wrong. Yes, he rebuked kings for their sakes, saying, Do not touch my anointed ones and do my prophets no harm. I repeat that. Do not touch my anointed ones and do my prophets no harm. Sing to the Lord, all the earth, proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day, declare his glory among the nations, his wonders among all peoples, for the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is also to be feared among all gods, for all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Hallelujah. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and gladness are in his place. Amen. When we come to God, we receive honor. Amen. We receive strength and gladness of heart. We receive royalty. Give to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Give to the Lord glory and strength. Hallelujah. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Because when we worship God, it is telling God that you love him. I love you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before him, all the earth. The world also is firmly established. It shall not be moved. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. And let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Let the sea roar and all its fullness. Let the field rejoice and all that is in it then the trees of the woods shall rejoice before the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. Scientists have found out that every plant, every tree makes music and they have made senses. I will try and send it to, across to you through WhatsApp. And they made uh, senses that would pick up and transmit those vibrations and its sweet music. Even the cactus will bring forth its music. And the redwood trees, those huge trees in California, they bring forth music. The little plants, 
bring music and when they tested dead trees it wouldn't bring music but when those creepers would go on the dead trees those creepers would bring music amen if you have plants you need to sing play music and they grow better when you are watering them whistle or sing and play music they love it hallelujah we will get to know all of it someday amen hallelujah wonderful it says and the trees of the field shall clap their hands amen here verse 33 says then the trees of the woods shall rejoice before the lord verse 34 oh give thanks to the lord for he is good for his mercy endures forever that is why when you are in the woods you are having a quiet time by the seaside and the palm trees are there you feel so good it's refreshing in the very presence of god because his creation the plants and the trees they are singing music and they're playing music unto the lord they are singing praises unto the lord hallelujah how much more we the living have to praise god these are living plants these are living trees these are all bringing forth hallelujah all that has breath praise the lord it's only the living that can praise the lord his mercy endures forever verse 35 and say save us O god of our salvation gather us together and deliver us from the gentiles to give thanks to your holy name to triumph in your praise blessed be the lord god of israel from everlasting to everlasting and all the people said amen it must be so so be it yes that's the truth and praise the lord there's a constant ministry at the ark hallelujah i'm waiting to have the 24 7 house of prayer amen and with bowl and harp worship the lord 24 7 unto the lord amen it's coming it's coming hallelujah chapter 17 the final chapter for today there is a desire of david to build god's house hallelujah now it came to pass when david was dwelling in his house that david said to nathan the prophet see now i dwell in a house of cedar remember the king of tyre gave him all the cedars to build a beautiful wood paneled house but the ark of the covenant of the lord is under tent curtains then nathan said to david do all that is in your heart for god is with you we need to build god's house and never neglect the house of the lord god had told david clearly that his son was going to build the house of the Lord. Solomon, the son of Bathsheba, was going to build the house of the Lord. Amen. Because David was a man of blood. He fought wars. He was a warrior, although he was a worshiper as well. But he had too much of blood on his hands and God allowed his son instead to build the house of God. But God gave David the privilege to prepare for building with the house of the Lord. And he gathered all the best of materials to build the house of the Lord. And then we see the grandeur of the house of the Lord built as the temple of Solomon. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? And once again, there is praise and a prayer of David in verse 16 onwards. Hallelujah. Right down to the end. The Lord shall be blessed forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your holy word. 
we pray that we would go all out to be helpers like the help of the Holy Spirit who's building your house and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Your house is built with living stones, the spiritual temple. But even as we build houses that are meant for your people to come together and praise you and worship you, you are the one who will provide for us. And as we build your house, you will build us. And none would be roofless, but all would have a house of their own for your glory. Nothing is impossible with you. Bless your people. And we pray we would have a godly heritage. We would have a godly lineage, even spiritually, as the time is short and you are coming back. Bless our natural seed and bless our spiritual seed for the greater good and for the glory of God. Amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah.